Welcome. Uh, my name is Dr. Corey Edgar. I'm from the University of Connecticut. Uh, today I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, treatment considerations for patellofemoral arthroplasty. One thing I'd like to talk about is the more complex patient. They can do very well with patellofemoral arthroplasty and allows us to do very beneficial things for these patients. Oftentimes they have significant dysplasia within the distal femur and the trochlea and these patellofemoral arthroplasties, especially the onlay ones, allow us to really change the morphology. So remember, these patients have risk factors for their chronic instability that have now led to patellofemoral arthrosis, like dysplasia, malalignment, hyperlaxity of the soft tissues, and certainly patella alta. This is a prime example of a patient that has chronic patellofemoral instability as a young girl. She has progressed into her late 30s. These are x-rays now at 41. She has severe patellofemoral arthritis, uh, lateralized patella tracking, increased tibial tubercle angle. On this left MRI image, you can see their TT, TG, distance is 22.6. You can even see her patella tendon rubbing against the whole lateral side of her trochlea. You can see the progressive wear and tilt pattern for patellofemoral joint on the right MRI image. I think these patients do very well if you treat them like patellofemoral patients. Just doing an isolated patellofemoral replacement might help with some of their anterior knee pain, arthritic symptoms, but the instability may lead to sort of long-term issues in terms of their, their native anatomy malalignment. So I do think treating these patients, uh, this is an example of mine that had a tibial tubercle osteotomy, allows you great access to the patellofemoral compartment and then you can adjust their patellofemoral tracking with this. Additionally, it's important to make sure you take enough bone. Soft tissue balance is important, as well as, in my opinion, making sure that the patella button is as large as possible, centric or even slightly lateral. Again, all we're talking about is this lateral force vector, which is what the quadriceps angle is, which is what we're quantifying with tibial tubercle trochlear groove distance off the imagings. Now this can be measured and it's within a well range. And remember that just because people have lateral tilt that doesn't beget tightness, it could just mean that there's some malalignment issues. So we have to think about this with our approach with these patellofemoral patients and realize that some of their pathology may be a little bit more than just simple patellofemoral arthritis. Trochlear dysplasia is typically based on lateral x-rays. That's why I usually get them, but I think with patellofemoral dysplasia, specifically with the inlay systems, you cannot adjust this. So even though you might have a lower de jure, meaning a less dysplastic patient, you often have moderates, which could do well with a onlay type of system, but certainly in the person that has a much more severe patellofemoral dysplasia, the ability that we have to manipulate the anatomy of the trochlea with a onlay system is much better and allows us much more opportunity to adjust their native morphology. Again, this is an example of a patient that has severe patellofemoral dysplasia. The younger patient doesn't necessarily have arthrosis, but it highlights the point of the anatomy of a dysplastic patient in the distal trochlea. You can see how small the surface area is. So a simple inlay system does not adjust this. It doesn't affect the length, doesn't affect the depth. Adjusting this with an onlay system allows us to manipulate their native morphology much better. Regarding the medial approach, Sometimes we forget that there are various force vectors on the medial side. Oftentimes we talk about MPFL reconstruction for the non-arthritic patient with lateral instability. However, there are various variable force angles that are looked at here with the anatomic studies. So overtensioning this medial side can affect your patellofemoral compression forces with the medial arthrotomy approach. Quantification of their malalignment typically is done with this concept of axial relationship between the tibial tubercle and the trochlear groove. Typically with instability patients, we think a normal range in males and females are slightly different, but anywhere from nine to 13 was well within a normal range. Things above 15 and certainly a greater than 20 are considered highly abnormal and may need to be considered as something you have to address when dealing with malalignment in a patellofemoral arthritic patient. Addressing this malalignment is actually not that difficult. Tibial tubercle osteotomies are implemented for a variety of reasons and even patients with pre-significant arthritis with lateral sided pain, osteotomy can even be done. The goal of the osteotomy is obviously to correct the functional cue angle and adjust the patella tracking. Variable cuts can be made. In my opinion, a reasonable oblique angle about 30 degrees provides enough surface area, two screws, and this for my patient population does not slow down by any means the amount of post-operative rehab. I allow them weight bear fully. They can initiate range of motion as soon as they tolerate. Usually by two weeks they're walking without a brace after a patellofemoral replacement with a tibial tubercle osteotomy. Again, the tibial tubercle osteotomies can also address the angle at which the patella engages. So obviously when we have patella alta, a high riding patella just takes longer of knee flexion until the patella is captured within the trochlea. So by either adjusting the patellofemoral implant, creating a longer trochlea, you're adjusting that 
earlier capture or by doing a tibial tubercle osteotomy where we're distalizing helps that balance of a high riding patella alta. Lastly, I want to talk about the complex uh, dysplastic patient with chronic instability. So this is a particular case example patient of mine who's had chronic patella lateral instability with multiple dislocations from a very early age. She's got bad morphology, bad patella femoral tracking, now in her late 30s, early 40s, she's severely limited, can no longer even work as a nurse. As you see on her lateral x-ray, she's got a maltracking patella with not a true lateral x-ray, but she does have patella femoral dysplasia. This is her merchant view, and you can see what looks to be like a good relatively patella captured in a lateral compartment. However, if you look at this through a wider range, she actually has a preserved trochlea groove. She has completely worn away her lateral trochlea ridge with a severely malaligned patella from a compartment. She had native trochlea dysplasia, now with lateralized tracking, has literally worn into her lateral facet, now with more significant patella from arthritis and instability. Her complaints now are instability and patella femoral pain secondary to arthritis. Tibial tubercle trochlear groove distance, as you would expect, is fairly high and I would say in a pathologic range of 25. For her, she also needs a tibial tubercle osteotomy. Because of her soft tissue, which was hyperlax, she did have a medial repair through a lateral approach of the arthrotomy. That allows me to do a primary repair on the medial side. Some cases I've even done a medial patella femoral ligament reconstruction. Obviously, we do a tibial tubercle osteotomy to get her alignment back into a, a much more normal range and certainly an onlay patella femoral prosthesis allows us to adjust her patella femoral morphology, which was part of her problem in the beginning. As you can see with this on a contralateral side, which was less symptomatic, but still has the same anatomic issues, you can see on her patella femoral replacement or realignment size that she has much better patella femoral tracking. She has full capture of her distal femur. She is quite happy in both her patella femoral instability symptoms and pain symptoms are gone and she's been progressing well and actually returned back to work as a nurse. As a patellofemoral surgeon, there are many ways you can approach this from an arthrotomy standpoint. The classic way, as we're all taught doing total knees, is through a medial side. I think there is real benefit in doing a lateral approach, especially for people with more complex patellofemoral problems that we're trying to treat with an patellofemoral arthroplasty. First of all, it allows us an ability to titrate through our lateral approach by doing a step cut lengthening. So when we do our arthrotomy closure, we can actually titrate our closure so we can actually create a patellofemoral lengthening on the lateral side. That gives us soft tissue balance. Certainly that helps after we've made sure that we've adjusted our patellofemoral implant so it sits central or even lateral. Our patellofemoral button has to be placed either central or potentially even lateral. This is difficult because it's difficult to cut the patella in particular with these patients because oftentimes they have significant lateral sided wear. Oftentimes when we do our cuts we're trying to maximize the amount of patella bone that's left. Oftentimes with these patients you even have to build up the lateral side with cement to make sure the button's placed perfect so the cut underneath the patella is important. I believe from the lateral side it's much easier to approach this problem. Additionally, from the lateral side, in my opinion, I think it's much easier to visualize the femur, the distal femur where we're making our cuts, so that way we can adjust the rotation and the position on the distal femur that we're putting our onlay arthroplasty. So an example of this is a patient that had bilateral patella femoral replacements, no significant malalignment, but classic lateralized patella tracking with adhesions within the lateral retinaculum. The left knee was done through a medial approach, right knee was done through a lateral approach. You can see there are slight differences in where the button is placed, slight differences where the implant is placed. More importantly, there's a much bigger difference in the titration and the tracking of the patella, same flexion angle on the x-ray. Done bilateral merchant view.